Hello, this is Ira again, and today we're going to take a look at sensors and detectors. 181.002, in the previous video I put 182.002, but that's uh, reactor theory, so no, we're still in components. 181.002 components, a uh, section of sensors and detectors, and we're going to go over knowledge 4. In knowledge 4, we're going to review equalizing valves, differential pressure detector, and some pipe elbows examples so we're just gonna go over this one so a pressure equalizing valve we use this to equalize a pressure and the uh, high and low pressures right so we have this equalizing valve so when the equalizing valve is open when we open this valve a connection is made between the high side and the low side and the pressure uh, in this in the low side and the high side equalizes, but it does it does not equalize to zero pressure. So the equalized pressure is the same on the high and is the same on the low. So at that point, whatever steps are necessary to adjust, like if we have a transmitter to read zero differential pressure, that's where it can be done. So for GFEs, if we decided that we're gonna open the equalizing valve for GFE's purpose, we're gonna say that the differential pressure goes to zero. So we're gonna use this relationship. So we're gonna have our flow indication is gonna be proportional to the square root of the differential pressure. So when we open the valve that the differential pressure goes to zero, that means that our flow rate indicated is going to go to a minimum, right? And that's all we need to know this part for GFIS. So the next one is a differential pressure detector or sensor. These are often used to indirectly measure flow, but also we use these devices to measure the difference between two pressures as well. So we're going to use it to measure two pressures. So this differential pressure uh, device is used uh, different. It, it uses a difference of high pressure side and low pressure side. And, and we use it to measure the level in a closed tank. So we're going to go over some of the of the tanks. Oh, and I think it's going to be knowledge in the following knowledge. I think it's not going to be knowledge 5 because in knowledge 5 we're going to take a look at something else. But in knowledge six and uh, knowledge seven, if I remember correctly, we're gonna start taking a look at tanks, and that's where we're gonna start using this principle a little bit more. So let's wait until knowledge six and knowledge seven, right? To start taking a look at tanks. But in the meantime, for this knowledge, what we need to know about GFIS is that if we have a flow indication that is greater than their actual indication, that's that means that debris is clogged in an orifice. That mean that means that we are gonna have a smaller area in the orifice. And that's gonna produce a larger pressure drop here. So we're gonna have a larger pressure drop and we're gonna have this higher indication. Right, or the contrary, when the indication, the flow indication is gonna be lower than the actual, that means the opposite. That means that uh, we, our orifice is uh, gonna become a little larger. It could be that we have some erosion, right? Since, since we already talked before, for uh, flow systems with a steam, you know, we can erode, you know, those orifices. So. What we're gonna see is we're gonna see a reduction, right, on the differential pressure. So this gonna reduce the flow, and my flow indicated is gonna go down. And that's all that we need in this part for GFIS. So now, let's take a look at the pipe elbows. This is these are very interesting. I really like them. But uh, we're not going to get into it because we don't need to for GFIs. These are really fun. 
you know, elbows are like a little complicated. So in fact, like any curved pipe is always going to induce a larger loss than the simple straight pipe. And this is due to the fact that in a curved pipe, the flow separates on the curved wall. So the curve is going to, I'm sorry, the flow is going to separate on the curved wall. So we're going to have different velocities. Uh, and as we can see here in this, in this drawing here, in this figure that I got from uh, Sandia, paper from Sandia, we're going to have different pressures. So and that's what we're going to need to have for GP. So as we can see in the inner wall, which is this part, or pressure is going to be lower. As we can see here, we're going to have a lower pressure. And on this outer wall, the pressure is going to be higher. So and there are other uh, CFD, like other simulations, so that where we can see the you know, velocity here is higher, velocity here is lower. But what we need to know for GFIS is to is, you know about pressure. So pressure in this area in the inner part is going to be lower. And pressure on the outer part is going to be higher. So we're going to use the same relationship that we've been using, right? The flow indicated is going to be equal or is proportional to the square root of the differential pressure. And the square root of the differential pressure is the square root of pressure high minus pressure low. Right? So we're going to use that relationship and we have it in here. So we have a leak on the higher part of the flow. We have a leak. We are reducing our pressure on 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 the high pressure area or orifice. If we reduce this, that means that we are reducing our differential pressure, meaning that the the flow indicated is gonna be low. And I'm just gonna go over like how I do it. How do I analyze this in case so I don't forget? I need to have numbers sometimes. Sometimes what I do is I say, okay, I have my volumetric indication. And if you're telling me that I have a leakage on the high flow and this one is stays the same, what I like to say is that this one, my initial is 10 minus 5. I've always assigned this random number so I can have like a sense of what's happening, right? But it, since this one decreased, so let's say now it's 9, and this one is 5. So now this one is 4, so my differential pressure reduced, got reduced. So that's kind of like how I do it, in case like I'm too overwhelmed and I forget how to do it. So I just plug in fake numbers, and I can see that from here. Contrary, if I have a leakage on the lower side, I'm just lowering my low low pressure side a little bit more and that's gonna increase my differential pressure therefore it's gonna increase my flow indicated and that's all that we need to know for this and we can use or we're gonna use a similar approach on this one and we're gonna just uh straight to go and see some examples about this one but in this one we have uh two extra orifices in here right so we have the highest pressure side, which is on the outer wall. And then we have the lowest pressure side that is on the inner wall. And then we have here, right? We have this two, and this are going to also have a low pressure in here. And one important thing to notice is that in this type of system, if there's a change in the system pressure, we will not affect our flow indicated it, it will be unaffected so that's something that we we need to know to answer some of the gps questions so now let's go and get and try to solve some of the problems okay so now we are on the gps bank let's go over this question p1007 so see figure below which is a pipe elbow so is the pipe elbow with two Right? Remember what we say? High, low. Okay? So a differential pressure flow detector is connected to an instrument's line A and B. So we have an instrument here. 
uh, differential pressure detector that is connected to both of them, to the high and the low side. If the instrument line A develops a leak, I is going to be the highest, right? If, what did we say? We have a leak, we're going to lower our pressure. So our pressure is going to get lower, right? So we initially are here. If we want to plug in numbers, so this one decreased and Bravo remains unchanged. We decrease our differential pressure, therefore, we decrease our flow indicated. So, what happens if instrument line A develops a leak? The indicated flow rate will decrease due to a decrease measure differential pressure so both of them will decrease so the answer is d says decrease is smaller yeah that's what we got okay now let's go and take a look at the next one and the next one is gonna include the one with the four orifices okay okay so now let's take a look at this one this one is uh, p1608 so we have three separate differential pressure flow detectors. So we have detector X, Y, and C. And detector X is going to be connected to A and D. So that's detector A. Detector B is going to be, I'm sorry, detector Y is going to be connected to B and D. And detector C is going to be connected to C and D. Okay? And we have them here. So now let's analyze one by one. What's what's happening? So it says three separate differential pressure flow detectors are connected to tabs A, B, C, and D. We already take a look at how they are connected. We know we have the three detectors. So assuming zero head loss in the section of the pipe, how will the detectors be affected if tab B ruptures? So if tab D ruptures, which is the highest, so we're gonna affect this detector, we're gonna affect this detector, and we're gonna affect this detector, we just still don't know how, right? So we use our relationship of uh, flow rate indicated is proportional to the square root of the differential pressure. So since we are affecting the high pressure on each one of them, we know that our differential pressure in all of them is gonna go down, meaning that the flow indicated is also gonna go down in all of them because we are using the same relationship. This is the high side, this is the low side, this is the high side, this is the low side, as we can see here. So this is the low side, this is the high side, high and low, high side and low side. So we are doing that comparison. So now, so what's happening? In reality, what's happening, we can have the answer right here. All detectors are failing low, right? And we can see that, yeah, that's one of the answers. So we got the right answer. We know that that's wrong. And this is wrong. And this is wrong because we know that all detectors are failing low in this case. Okay, so we already analyzed the one with four orifices. So now let's take a look at Let's go back and take a look at one with two. So it's going to be problem P2107. A differential pressure flow detector is connected to instrument lines A and B. If instrument line B develops a leak, so now we have a leak in this one. I had it backwards there, but now. We have a leak in this one. We have a leak in gravel, which is going to be our low side. This is our high side. So since we have a leak in here, we can say, okay, this is our high side and our low side. The DP is 5. You want to plug in some random numbers. So now if I have a leak on this one, I'm lowering my pressure, right? So now, by lowering my pressure, I'm increasing my differential pressure. That means that I'm increasing my 
flow indicated. So now if the line B develops a leak, if we have a leak in here, the indicated flow rate will increase, right? Due to a higher measure differential pressure, right? And that's how we solve this problem. Just gonna erase this one. We don't need it. Let's see if there's another one. Okay, yeah, this, let's take a look at this one, this last one. It's gonna be problem number P20, P2905. And in this one, we have the four orifices. It says that we have three separate velo types, differential pressure flow detectors. They are connected to taps A, B, C, and D as follows. It's similar to the other one. So we have three detectors. Detector X is connected through is connected to A and D. Detector Y is connected to B and D. And detector Z is connected to C and D. And we have them in here, right? And what is this one asking? So it's asking that how will the detectors be affected if that B experiences a significant leak? It's only talking about this detector. So this one. That means that this ones will remain unaffected, right? So this two will remain unaffected, right? Because I'm not modifying or doing anything on these two. So now what happens on this one, right? I have my low side here, the went down. So if my flow indicated, I have my high side minus my low side, but my low side decrease. So okay, now I have that my low side decrease. That is giving me a high differential pressure which is equal to the a high flow indicated. And yeah, that's right, that's what I have. So that means that only one detector, it's affected and only one detector will fail low. Let's see if we can find that in the answers. Only one detector will fail. Yes, we know this one is incorrect, this one is incorrect. We know the only one detector will fail but it's gonna fail high, right? It's failing high. So the correct answer is delta. And that's all that I have for knowledge for, for the sensors and detectors part. Thank you.